There are a few announcements I'd like to bring to your attention before we begin our worship. And please keep in your prayers uh, Linda and Charlie Cassidy and their family. Uh, Linda's mother, Lorraine Hendricks, died on Tuesday. Her funeral will, will be at St. David's in Willow Grove on Wednesday at 1045 in the morning. Please also remember in your prayers our uh, regional dean, David McGettigan. He's going to have non-invasive invasive, uh, heart procedure on Wednesday, so please keep him in your prayers as well. The concert on the lawn, which was canceled last week, has been rescheduled for Friday, August 21st at 7 p.m. Uh, let's pray for weather, because I'm looking forward to this concert on Wednesday evening. Evening. Um, be sure to bring your own lawn chairs or blanket and uh, wear your masks and stay socially uh, distant from each other. There's a lot of things going on. Please read your bulletins to uh, see what's in, what you can be involved with and what's happening. The theme for our worship today is the gospel is for all people who would have faith in Jesus Christ. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah speaks of foreigners who join themselves to the Lord God to bring to his holy mountain. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, God says. Our psalm repeats that same theme, let all the peoples praise you, O Lord, let all the peoples praise you. St. Paul in the second reading states his ministry for the reconciliation of the world that he might have mercy on all. And in the gospel, we encounter a Canaanite woman, a foreigner, who comes to Jesus and actually is lifted up and praised by him for her, her faith in Jesus. In our prayer for the day, we pray that we, for that perfect faith which overcomes all doubts. Let us now listen to the story of God's incredible love for all peoples and then go out and tell the story to all.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you have given great and precious promises to those who believe. Grant us the perfect faith which overcomes all doubts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. from Isaiah, thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order to somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake, but as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, I love dogs. Now, I know that not everyone shares my enthusiasm and, and affection for these cute four-legged creatures, but some people even see dogs as an object of, of, of disdain, creatures to be feared and even looked down upon. Some people even use the word dog as an insult. Not in our house. In these days, people are concerned about not insulting someone by the terms they use, and so we're very politically correct in our speech. Well, in our house, we are politically correct concerning these wonderful four-legged four creatures. We no longer use the term dog. We call them canine Americans. <laughs> in our gospel text today, Jesus seems to be insulting this woman who is calling after him. And yet, I would suggest that in calling her a dog, Jesus is actually paying her a compliment. Think about it for a minute. Dogs 
have traditionally been called man's best friend. They are known for their loyalty and their faithfulness. Unlike children, dogs never say no. They hardly ever talk back. Dogs accept you just the way you are. Dogs never ask for money, for college tuition, or the keys to the car. Luther said of dogs, the dog is the most faithful of animals and would be much esteemed were it not so common. When Luther's dog, Tupple, happened to be at the table, he looked for a morsel from his master and watched with open mouth and motionless eyes. Luther said, oh, if I could only pray the way that dog watches the meat. All his thoughts are concentrated on that piece of meat. Otherwise, he has no thought wish or hope. Best of all, dogs have faith in you. You can scold them, punish them, call them names, and they're right back at your side wagging their tail as if you're the best person in the world. Dogs look up to you. Dogs never give up on you. Dogs have faith in you. I believe that is why today's gospel presents to us a dog's faith. Jesus withdrew from his busy schedule in Galilee for some rest and relaxation in Tyre and Sidon. Now today, Tyre and Sidon is part of Lebanon. This region is as far north as Jesus will ever travel in his ministry. This is a good place for him to go because he would be left alone. Because, you see, the Canaanites were foreigners. And the Jews looked down on Canaanites. They were not Jewish. They were pagans. The Jewish people wanted no association with the Canaanites, so it would be natural that the Canaanites would leave this Jewish rabbi alone. This is really too bad because God had chosen the Jewish people to be the light for all the nations to know God's salvation. God's plan was for the Jewish nation to lead all nations, peoples, all races to the salvation of God. God. God's intent was for salvation to come not because of a person's race or nationality, but because of a person's faith in Jesus Christ, God's Messiah. The prophet Isaiah spoke of God's plan of salvation hundreds of years before Jesus, as we heard in the first reading today. My salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, to keep the Sabbath and hold fast to my covenant, these will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. And the psalm also reflects that same theme. Let the peoples praise you, O Lord. Let all the peoples praise you. God's salvation is not just for one race of people or one class or one nation. God's salvation is for anyone who has faith in Jesus, no matter what uh, race or nation. But now as Jesus is in ter uh, Gentile territory, a Canaanite woman came to Jesus with a plea for her daughter's healing. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Lord, have mercy is the Kyrie which we use almost every Sunday in our liturgy. Jesus uses this, though, as an opportunity to show her faith, the faith of this foreigner, as an example for the disciples and for us. At first, Jesus ignores her. Matthew says, Jesus did not answer her a word. Luther, in his very blunt way, says of Christ here, he is silent as a stump. To make things worse, the disciples wanted to send her away, but she persistently keeps begging the Lord. And then he points out her status as a foreigner. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now Jesus is not saying no, 
but he's not saying yet. Yes, not yet. Finally, it seems that he insults her by inferring that she is a dog. And yet she keeps accepting that status as a dog and keeps going after Jesus, knowing that he is the only one that can help her daughter. She is willing to accept the crumbs that fall from the table. This woman never gives up. By this time, she's on her knees, a sign of worship. Through this dialogue, Christ is showing us an example of her faith in Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of David, her Lord. She is lifted up as a, an example of persistent faith. Like a dog, she never gives up. She continues to come back to Jesus because of her faith in him. And finally, Jesus praises her for her dog-like faith. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you desire. And Matthew concludes, and her daughter was healed instantly. This woman is an example for us. Her dependence, her persistence, her confident faith in Jesus only. We are like that Canaanite woman. We are in need of salvation, forgiveness, and healing from God. In our communion hymn today, we will confess, are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Take it to the Lord in prayer. Like the Canaanite woman, we come to Jesus confessing him as Lord and Savior, depending upon him for all we need, persistently looking only to Jesus and with complete faith in Jesus. And like the Canaanite woman, this foreigner, when we in faith take our fears and our sins and our needs to Christ, he will receive us. Too often, though, we would shun those who differ from us as not worthy of inclusion in the fellowship of the church. Too often, we, like the disciples, would exclude those who don't fit in the way we think they should. When we exclude others because of external factors, we are really excluding ourselves from the grace and mercy of God. Outside of the grace and mercy of God is death and hell. We do need God's grace and God's forgiveness. Christ came to call not only the righteous, but also the sinners. Like St. Paul, we need to confess that we are chief of sinners in desperate need of salvation that only Jesus can offer. When we turn to Jesus in faith, he reaches out to us and heals and forgives us. By his outstretched arms on the cross, Jesus reaches out to the world to receive all who would come to him in faith. By his death and resurrection, he takes our sin, our foolish pride, and our death upon himself, and in exchange he gives us life, forgiveness, grace, and salvation. This gift of his free forgiveness is given to all who come to him with a dog-like faith, for he is all we have. There was once a woman who seemed to be happy no matter what was happening in her life. She had joy and peace even though it seemed like her life was falling apart. When she was asked why she has a strong, such a strong faith when everything else is falling apart and looks bad, she said, I never realized how much I needed Jesus until I realized Jesus is all I had. Jesus is all we need. Not status or wealth, not the right skin color or national heritage. Our God is a God for all people. All people who would turn to him in faith and trust with a faith even like a dog's faith. God makes no distinction between races or nations. He has all we need, forgiveness, life, and salvation. 
So there are three lessons we can learn from this Canaanite woman. First, we must recognize our dependence upon Jesus. We are totally lost without him. We need the healing and forgiveness and new life that comes from only Jesus. Second, we need to have that, a persistent desire for his help. One thing is to recognize a need, but it does us no good until we persistently go to the right source, the true, the true giver of salvation. And third, we need to have a faith in Christ. He can provide all we need. Our faith is a gift given to us by the Holy Spirit, poured out upon us in our baptism, and strengthened by his word and sacrament. Great is your faith, Jesus told the woman. She knew there was only one source for her help and salvation. She did not have faith in herself, nor her religion, nor her nationality, nor her group identity. Her faith was in his one person, Jesus Christ. Just as the Canaanite woman is an example of faith for us, in the same way today the church is an example of Christ to the world. We are called in mission to go out to all people, even those who differ from us, and especially those who differ. In our gathering around word and sacrament, we receive strength to be signs of comfort, healing, and welcome for those in need. This text challenges us to go out from here to see everyone as a child of God and welcome all to come and know Jesus and to come into God's house of prayer for all people. May we have that same dog-like faith that confesses Jesus as Lord, a faith that is dependent on Jesus only, a faith that is persistent in turning to Christ, a faith that is not built on status, wealth, race, but a simple dog-like faith in Christ and Christ alone. May the Holy Spirit give us such a faith. Amen.
with the whole church throughout the world, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our response is, Lord, have mercy. For true unity in the faith, for the preservation of the gospel, for harmony in the lives of this congregation, for the congregation of St. John's Fredericksburg, for the Atlantic Mission Region and the North American Lutheran Church, for our Bishop Dan Selbo, our Regional and Mission uh, District Deans, David and Dan, for all pastors and church workers, for our seminary and those preparing for full-time church work, that the gospel may be be proclaimed to all peoples everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those outside the kingdom, for missionaries near and far, especially Didi and Serafina Panzo, for the ministries and agencies of our church whereby the gospel is spoken to those who have not yet heard, and for those who hear that they might be brought to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all families, for husbands and wives to live in faithfulness to each other, for all mothers with child, for all children, and for those who bring them to baptism and nurture them in the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, the Congress, Thomas, our governor, all elected and appointed leaders, all judges, the members of the armed forces, and our police, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel in their duties to protect and serve us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the healing of the sick, the relief of the suffering, the comfort of the grieving, especially Linda and Charles Cassidy, and the peace of the dying, we pray especially for Pat, Harry, Sylvia, Jean, Linda, Emma, Jeffrey, Pastor David McGettigan, Lori, Ruth, Reverend Norman Beck, Bishop John Brodsky, and for those who care for them in their affliction, and those we name on our lips and in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy assembly and for our communion upon the Lord's body and blood, and for us to bear in our lives the fruits of the Spirit and do the good works for which we were called, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all honest work and occupations, for our good use of the fruits of our labors, for generosity for those in need, and for tithes and offerings that accompany our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us pray to the Lord. For our remembrance of the saints, especially Lorraine Hendricks, and in thanksgiving for their faithful witness that at the last we may be joined with them in your eternal presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of all that is good, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your grace that we may endure the changes and chances of this mortal life and be found worthy when our Savior comes to bring the completion of all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, serve the Lord.